Hello and welcome to Pokemon's video tutorials. Today I'll be walking you through the customer detail view. Okay, so I've logged in here uh, to my attack board. Let's go to our customers. I can either come here to customers and then view all. This will show me all my customers here in a list and I can just click on them. Or I can come uh, to this Omni search. It's always present and you can search by any piece of information. Uh, today I'm going to do a first name. Uh, Mike. Bring me all my mics. Uh, I'm going to go to Mike at Keyworth. Okay, here's the customer detail view. On the right we have the customer navigation and the left is the general navigation. And one of the best things about uh, the customer detail view along with everything in Pokemos is it is visible from any device. Um, if I resize the window here you can see it changes and it responds to how big your device is. So this is what it would look like on an iPad. And uh, going smaller, this is what it would kind of look like on a phone. You can see it uh, it's uh, very versatile across all devices. Okay, let's get right in. I'll just uh, explain each one of these uh, different areas, except for this right here. The locations is covered in another video. Um, let's start with the customer tack board. The customer tack board is a way to assign alerts and notes directly to a customer. So before a technician starts his service, he can check not only the alerts, uh, but also the to-do items and the general account notes. So if I was a technician before I started my service, I could see this and say, oh, okay, treat shed. And I also see down here, launch shed treated every time. Okay, and that's the purpose of, uh, of a tack board. By clicking here or here, you can add notes directly to the customer tack board. Going to the service information, this is the general information on the account. Here's uh, the general uh, service address and name. You can view this person in maps. There's his home right there. And you can view some general information here. Here's the account notes. You can see, I can see who added it, what type of note it was, and they are arranged uh, chronologically. This search bar here, along with all the search bars contained within tables throughout the system, will, will search just this table. So I typed in shed, you see, and it brings up this because there's the word shed in it. Okay. By clicking here on these edit buttons, I can edit this box of information. So you see, you know, here's his pricing, his type of contract. So if I hit edit, I can, you know, change the information as needed. Uh, if he needs different services or different pests taken care of, I can change it here, um, add different information there. Okay, I can also change his information by clicking this edit button here and adding or editing um, general information. By going to billing information, I can add or remove or edit billing accounts, whether it be credit card, debit card, or automatic bank transfer. Uh, you can see I can edit like a billing address. If the person has a different different billing information, I can do that from here. Uh, let's go back to that. I can also enroll this person in auto pay. Now I'm going to come back to that in just one second, but here's where you check or uncheck auto pay. Down here are the payment accounts. You see this person has a credit card on file, um, and I can edit that by, by clicking here. A customer can have more than one credit card on file. They can have as many as they want, and when you set up AutoPay, you can choose and specify which credit card or AutoPay account it comes out of, or if you manually charge it, you can choose from however many different accounts they have on file. This is also true for um, checking withdrawals or bank transfers. Um, I can add these different accounts by coming here and clicking Add Account. You can name it. Okay, and input their information here. Okay, by clicking here on the credit, I can add account credit to this person's account. Say if I give him a discount, or for some reason he has fifty dollars in credit, I can get that. I can put put that on his account. Now that doesn't automatically apply to his account. You can choose to apply it to any outstanding invoices, um, either right now or in the future. Uh, the general notes down here, as you notice, 
no matter where we go in the customer detail view is always going to be present. You can always add or look at the notes. By coming here to schedule services, I can see all the services that are scheduled into the future for this person. He has a 12 month contract and here are his remaining services. Now you can see this one's pending, this one has been rescheduled, um, here's the prices, um, and they haven't been assigned to any technicians as of yet. By clicking on the row of each job, I can manually edit it. I can change the service type here, I can change the status here, mark it complete, rescheduled or canceled, or I can change the price here. By clicking on the action button, I can reschedule, um, go to the payment details for this job, download this job's invoice into a PDF, manually assign it to a route, or go to the service invoice. Okay. Let's reschedule this. So say I want to schedule this for two weeks later than what it is. I can choose to schedule it for a specific time or just that day and then once I route and uh, figure out my schedule for that week or that day I can apply it to a certain time. Now uh, here's one, one feature that is great. Uh, once I apply this uh, reschedule to two weeks later I can choose to apply changes to the future services. This means um, I just rescheduled this job for two weeks later. If I choose this one, offset future jobs by the same number of days, it will move all the rest of the, the services and the jobs by two weeks. So I can choose to do that or not. Um, it, it's really up to you depending on that particular account. I'll go ahead and do that. Whoop, looks like I scheduled it for the past. Let me schedule it in the future here. Okay. okay, and everything's been changed accordingly. By clicking here, Add Service, I can add individual services um, to this person's contract, whether it's a reservice or additional service. You can see I can mark it as a reservice or follow-up or inspection, name its price, the time it's scheduled, the date it's scheduled and so on. By going to the history you can see it gives me two options. I'm going to go to the services. Um, this is just what it sounds like. It's a history of all the services or jobs that have been completed or not completed, paid or not paid on this person's current contract. You can see um, this has been present no matter where we've gone, gone in the system um, in the customer detail view. He owes $99, but now it sees, it sees a different counter, lifetime revenue, $89. This comes from here. You can see this job has been completed as his initial service for $89. He has a zero balance, and it was paid. You see this job is for $99. He has a balance of $99, and it has not been paid, so therefore it shows up here. Uh, the service history allows you to do several different things. Um, First, in this table here, I can search this table specifically. Um, I can filter um, any pending, complete, rescheduled, or canceled jobs here. And by clicking on uh, the row itself, it takes me to uh, the chemical sheet or the service invoice. And this is what has been done on this job. You can see this one is blank. It was just marked as complete. By clicking on the action button, I can go to the payment details, uh, download the service invoice, or the service record. Uh, the invoice will have billing information on it. The service record is just a PDF of the chemical sheet. If I go here, you can see this is the digital invoice. Uh, you can see this was a cash sale, um, 420s and 91s. It has zero balance. It was paid here. Okay, going back. By clicking export history, I can export um, all this table information into separate PDFs um, if I want a billing reconciliation or if I want to send them uh, to this customer. By clicking download summary, I can download a summary of all their paid or unpaid um, invoices into a PDF. 
And yes, this works from any device. So say if you have a tablet in the field and if you click download summary and uh, you know you can download it directly to your device and print it off on any normal printer. It does, let's see. Sometimes uh, PDFs take a, a minute to download, so we'll just wait for, for one second. Okay. So here is the summary. You can see if this person had more um, more uh, invoices in the summary, it would, they would all be listed here. And say this person has four uh, unpaid invoices, um, they would all they would all be listed here. They would all be itemized, and the total would be down here. So you can send that or email that to uh, to a person. Okay. By clicking on the uh, invoices over here, I can search all the invoices that have been completed um, in this account. Now you'll notice uh, this filter here, the locations. Now we didn't go over the locations, but what that does is allow you to have uh, one master account or parent account and many sub-accounts. So if somebody has rental properties or if you're servicing an apartment complex or something like that, um, you can add that here. And this uh, <clears throat> search will allow you to search for specific invoices across all those accounts or specific locations within this account. And you can search for all the paid, um, all the different statuses, or all of them all together. And here's some additional filters here. And once you search for a specific invoice, you can <clears throat> export that um, or just look at it here digitally. Okay. By clicking a quick add service, this is present no matter where you are in the customer detail view, and this will give you uh, the ability to add a service to this person's contract. Now we went through this before on the scheduled services, um, but this will, uh, you can see three different dates. What this is doing is Pokemos is suggesting three times to you that work uh, for this person's schedule. Pokemos is going to look at what you have currently scheduled and suggest three three best times to where you're already in this person's area. You can see I have uh, you know Friday the morning seems pretty much open and I'm already there. I'm already near to this person's house, so I can click uh, okay. I want to do Friday at 9:30. And maybe if you're speaking to this person and you're adding a service or a reservice, it gives you three suggestions. So um, if that if maybe one doesn't work for that person's schedule, but again uh, this is Pokemos suggesting based on your current schedule when you're already in the neighborhood, um, already in this person's neighborhood. Okay, I can do a reservice and create a schedule, or create a service. The quick charge feature allows you to quickly apply payments. So if you get a check mailed in or you call a customer on the phone, um, you can pay different services, or you can pay all the services all at once. So if somebody gives you a check for the entire total or just some of it, um, you can do that. You can see different counts, different methods, check here, check number. Uh, you can also create and apply a payment to a new invoice. This is going to create a miscellaneous invoice if you had a customer uh, with maybe a late charge or finance charge or you know something like that. You can also see this Pokemon gives you a note. Hey, this person has an account credit for fifty dollars, just as an FYI, and that's the fifty dollars we added just a moment ago. So that's most of the customer detail view. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video.